so this is my Commodore 64, sort of. It, uh, for all intents and purposes, on the outside it looks like a standard 64, uh, but on the inside, not so much. So, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, I picked up a Commodore 64 at the local recycling place. Uh, they didn't weren't able to test it because it was missing its power supply, uh, but it was dirt cheap, and it even came in a box. So I bought it home, uh, started poking around with it, uh, with the power supply that I already had here. Uh, initially it looked like it was just a dead PLA chip, but it turned out it was more, and after that uh, I really didn't know, I don't know enough about Commodore 64s to go picking, uh, poking at it too much more. But, I did have another project I've been wanting to play around with, and that's where this comes in. Uh, so instead of trying to fix the board, which I then turned into a, uh, into a teaching tool for, for work, uh, I decided to strip it right out, uh, and this is what it now looks like on the inside. As you can see, that's not a Commodore 64. So what we have here is, we've got a Raspberry Pi mounted, uh, and a Kira version 2 from, uh, I think they're made by Independent Computers, I bought this through Amiga Kit, um, but I've made a few little changes and I've done things a little bit basically the way I wanted to see them done. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, access to both USB and network easily from the back of the machine uh, and any of the ports on a Raspberry Pi these days you can buy uh, panel mount extenders a bit like this HDMI one here uh, but these ones were the the ones I use are the easiest ones to use. These ones may, can be a little bit more difficult, so that's why I uh, rotated the board this way. Uh, I cut out the little divider that normally goes here. Normally you've got your um, two circular ports just here, uh, so I've cut, I grind, carefully ground out the uh, divider and mounted the Raspberry Pi there. We've then got a HDMI uh, panel mount header. Uh, I've made up backing plates to cover all the unnecessary holes at the back. They're made just out of some 1mm aluminium, uh, except for this one here. This one's made out of uh, plastic. Um, and so there's those. Now, one thing that's I've never liked about the Raspberry Pi is there's no real kind of on and off function. Doing some research on this, I found this awesome little board here by uh, Pimeroni. It's simply called the Pimeroni On-Off Shim. Uh, and so you route your USB power into it. You can then also wire in a momentary touch button. Uh, and there's a little script that runs on, uh, under Raspbian uh, on the on the Pi. Uh, and this gives you a proper shut, power up and shutdown function, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, this wiring here, which goes up to a second LED up here, uh, it. Um, it was going to be... I wanted to try and mimic the the floppy drive light from a 1541. Um, it didn't really work out. Uh, there is two wiring spots on the bottom of the Pi just here where you can uh, basically mimic a hard drive light. The problem is is that the emulator that runs on this, which I'll show you in a minute, um, it basically just instantly loads the the image file into RAM, so there's no real read-write function, so it doesn't really work, unfortunately. Had I was to do it again, uh, I wouldn't bother with this, but of course I didn't discover this until I'd uh, drilled the hole in the case. Now, there was a couple of things I did want to change on this. Um, it would have been easy enough to put your micro USB power here and power and power button up the back here somewhere, and that's actually how I'd originally had it. Uh, however, on a normal Commodore 64, your power button's here uh, and your power input's over here. The problem is, is on the on the Kira, this spot just here is taken up by a little uh, function switch which switches the Kira uh, between two different functions, uh, symbolic and positional, I think. Uh, and this here is a USB port that you could, in theory, run an A to B cable from here into another computer and use this just as a keyboard um, which is okay but I've got no need for that so the the switch in the USB port was uh, carefully removed from the Kira 
and so then I mounted my power button here and my micro USB uh, header which comes from here uh, over to here uh, these mounts and there's another one buried in under here uh, are simply a couple of bits of uh, what we call in Australia wall plugs they're about five mil high they're super glued into place uh, and then uh, reinforced with just with a little bit of milliput which is a some modeling putty basically uh, and that gives us the strength and there's just a couple of tiny little self tapper screws which uh, fit through the standard holes of the Raspberry Pi uh, okay I will now show you the back of it and the side to give you an idea and then I'll uh, show you how it runs as you can see on the back I uh, filled up all the gaps that are no longer necessary uh, if you have a look at that roundish uh, port just there you'll see the two little screw holes next to it that's where I originally had the micro USB mounted but then I decided to move around the side where it kind of should be uh, that's where I've uh, widened those two ports there so that's where the Raspberry Pi sits uh, the micro uh, sorry the HDMI now sits uh, sits there where that used to be and then there's just another simply another blanking plate there which kind of makes the whole back of it quite neat and tidy if you ask me uh, and here at the side this is where the key rail is uh, as you can see we've got uh, the two nine pin joystick ports which are completely usable within the emulator uh, and uh, momentary touch power button and the micro USB power in uh, and it just uses a standard uh, 2.5 amp 5 volt micro USB charger so this is it all set up if I just hit the power button and it boots straight into uh, Vice now what I'm running on this is a uh, Raspbian uh, distribution called Combian I'll put a link down in the description uh, which is essentially a ready to rock and roll uh, distribution uh, for for the Raspberry Pi to do exactly just this just boot straight into uh, a Commodore 64 emulator now a lot of people have put uh, RetroPie on these so they can play all kinds of other games I've got other devices that do that um, basically I just wanted to make a Commodore 64 out of modern parts I guess with the conveniences of HDMI, USB and network uh, and so this is what I've come up with uh, and it simply loads uh, you can drop easily drop into the uh, into Vice's menu I'm using WSAD for the keys here um, Vice is pretty much set up to use a normal keyboard uh, so there's certain things that don't work for instance the shift cursor buttons they don't really work uh, so I've uh, moved it to WSAD uh, and you can simply go in, go drive, attach disk, uh, browse through my ridiculously complicated uh, directory structure, uh, pull up a random game, what are we going to use, maybe not Barbie, uh, how about Batman movie, and that simply puts it in there, we back out and we go load, eh, 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 eh. Now you remember it is emulating an entire 1541, so it's as slow as a 1541. Um, with the with the Kira and the optional switch at the side, um, if I'd left that in, I would have been able to use the keyboard a little better under actual Linux if you quit out of the emulator. Um, however, I've managed to get quite a lot of disk images already on there so hopefully I shouldn't have to do that very often so hence why I've, I've hardwired it into one of the positions um, and so the keyboard all works fantastically uh, under vice and that's all I'm really interested in uh, if I do need to uh, mess around I can either um, plug in a normal USB keyboard into the back uh, or SSH uh, into it um, and as you can see, it's uh, yeah, it's as slow as a fifteen forty one. And 
run. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, sure, why not? And there you go. And that is my, what I call, a Raspberry 64. Thank you very much.